this is going to be kind of um, odd, I think, um, because I'm trying to process the last three weeks <clears throat> and it's kind of brought things, things to my mind I need to be aware of, things I'm not going to pay attention to. Um, I'm not sure all the things that I can change, but certainly going to trying to find a way to articulate them better. Um, one of the uh, challenges, kind of averting the word away from uh, struggle, is to, uh, to keep the disappointments at bay. When things aren't working out, or it, even if they're minor things, they don't mean major things, but if things you know, can accumulate which are disappointing, um, I'm of the quality that it, it can uh, wear away at me and distract me from the things that, that I was enjoying doing or the things where I was finding success. And it was a coupling of uh, school holidays and a number of things which weren't getting off the ground as I'd hoped, um, along with a few things which um, were just, just basically disappointing um, that I guess collectively allowed me to get into a bit of a, I wouldn't say negative loop so much, but a non-positive loop where I was, I was disappointed I wasn't doing certain things. Disappointed that it wasn't working out the way I wanted to, coming from a place of expectation, which is, um, as you'll know when I, anything I've ever written or posted, um, is kind of the ingredient for unhappiness. And so I was getting to a point of expectation that wasn't working out. And, and even though I was able to combat that and be grateful for what did occur, it was accumulative to the point where I, I wasn't able to keep in touch with the appreciation side um, as much as I wanted to. And so the effect came, was very much that um, my expectations were being thwarted and that began to have a negative loop. But the point being, those disappointments um, were my focus of my attention and, my, and a focus of my state and a focus of my mood. And they were looping around on each other and feeding off each other. And I'll explain that a bit more, is that rather than the problem itself or any action relating to resolve it, anything that actually went to move forward or take a step forward to it, even for example, doing a video like this or doing a podcast or, the action itself had become the background. And then the foreground was the disappointment or the frustration of not achieving whatever, the, the projects or the, the goals I'd wanted to. And so the only thing that was kind of my attention, my focus, my state was that frustration, was that disappointment, was that negativity. That was what was, I was going negative about feeling negative. Um, rather than um, relating directly to the action. It was all about how I was feeling and, and, and that loop of I'm feeling negative, so which makes me feel sad, and that sad makes me feel negative loop, which maybe that's common for you as well. Um, and I think that at the same time overlaid with school holidays where it was tricky with, with already work commitments in place and managing children, downtime with them, looking to try and do other things that actually were uh, important to me weren't happening. And so yes, it's a, a collection of those things happening at once. But I wanted to share that with you because I think it's honest and it's important to see that if we can acknowledge that we have our downtime, that things aren't working out the way we want them to, it's often just a sign of our desire to improve what we're doing. And the second point is about how it, it isn't all the case all the time, but often when we're feeling not great about ourselves, when we're feeling maybe not achieving what we want to do, or whatever combination of that, that feeling is for you, we can just be focusing on that feeling of feeling disappointed rather than the action that needs to happen. Um, the disappointment of the negativity, the, the loop of thinking, just keeps on getting in that way and we just kind of, kind of get disappointed with ourselves for being disappointed. And it's about trying to 
break that out a little bit to, as I can often say in sessions, kind of like sellotape. We've got it all round and wrapped up and you can't really see through it. It's all just murky and misty. So you have to try and grab an edge of it, grab an edge to pull. And once you pull out the sellotape, one strip, as it were, you kind of be able to see through it. Um, it's no less sticky, maybe, but you can see through it and you can do something with it rather than the murky mess that is the roll. And that's trying to find ways to achieve that, to break that loop of thinking, to break that negativity, to start doing things and then start seeing through it and start kind of then getting a plan together and just kind of bit by bit, day by day, eating into it and making it happen. And if there's anything in there that you can extract that's going to be beneficial to you or compassionate to you or give you some sort of route out, I hope you can take it. I hope you can take some action from it. I hope you can recognize that you are in a, you could be in a negative loop, just rethinking your own state as not being successful, not happening or as a failure. And actually, it's not the action that is the thing that's in the way any further. It's your mindset towards it. The thing that the mindset being uh, not a positive one, a negative one. Um, so in, what could I give you to say to try and do something? I think recognizing that's how you're feeling. I think recognizing that's not how you want to feel. And finding a way to pull that sellotape so you can see through it clearer often starts with taking some sort of action. And maybe for me, this first part of action is doing a video and, and sharing the story. And maybe that begins the, the, the loop uh, and the change that I would like to see and get back on track onto my creativity and the things that make me happy as well. Sometimes we can sit and ponder and dwell and think and that may be appropriate at certain times, but after a while we can't always negotiate with our past to find the answers we're after. We can only discuss our future and sometimes the best thing to do is to do something that you know, and rather than ponder, should I, shouldn't I, I'm disappointed with not doing it, or whatever combination you're going to come up with in your mind, it's actually to just start and just take something and do it. There is um, only so much thinking we can do until we can replace it with action of some sort. And I think that's probably, if anything, it's all the most useful thing I can share with you, apart from the, from the story of the last couple of weeks. Because if we can get to that point of recognising that the pondering, the dwelling. It can be an advanced form of procrastination and fear. If we're aware of that, we're only left with one solution, which is we have to just take action. We can't, we won't get to the end of the sellotape roll maybe, but we have to start by peeling it and start with one step at a time. So what can I offer you to say is that consider how much time you are dwelling and pondering and if it's too much, then it's time to do something. Do anything. Take one action and make it consistent. Set up a goal of two days, three days, whatever you feel is achievable comfortably. And start building up your resources. Um, start building up the confidence you are achieving. Start building up the confidence that you are able to succeed again and get that kind of the mojo back, that kind of energy back of what you want to do. This is a good muscle to improve upon. It's a good muscle to test because whatever goals you may have, you're going to need it in place and to get stronger for you. So take that away. Give it some thought and I will catch you next time.